Okay, in uh, number two here, we've got a rod and um, it's originally hanging down and it's gonna twist up to 90 degrees. Now the thing that's uh, causing it to twist is this moment right here, all right? Okay, so it's important early on to think about where we wanna put our, our pivot point, our, our point of rotation. And this one, like the last one, it just makes a lot of sense to put that guy right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and crank out our moment of inertia. We know we're going to need that and um, see what we've got here. So our mass, okay, it says 50 pounds. So that means mg is 50. Um, so I'm going to say 50 over g, um, just like that. And that turns out to be 1.553. For the mass value, the moment of inertia for our, our rod is one third ml squared. So if you plug all of those numbers in, you're going to get 12.94. Okay. And I always like to remind you to practice that. Make sure you, you get that right. Okay. That should be easy money. Now let's go up to our energy equation our kinetic energy. And in the last one, we treated, um, well, I mean, the center of mass wasn't moving. So all we had in that last one was this kinetic energy for rotation. That's all we had. Okay. In this one, it's rotating and it's also going to be moving. Okay. Now, we actually, however, we're going to discount. We're not going to deal with this term. We're going to get rid of that term because we have put the point of rotation at O. Now, what that does for us is it allows us to, it's called, it's another one of these instantaneous centers. And so what it allows us to do is to bundle our, ten, our uh, translational efforts, our translational effects with our rotational effects, okay? So my center of mass is in here. So if this whole thing rotates, okay, just by rotating, I can take into account the change in the center of mass for the object, okay? Now it starts again, it starts from rest, so we're not gonna need this term. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on with our work terms. Um, so with this term right here, okay, the force acting on it is gravity. So we've got a minus mg, its weight, and then the distance it's going to travel, okay. So the center of mass was down here, it was two and a half feet down, and it's going to go up two and a half feet. So from here up to here. So the center of mass changes two and a half feet. So this whole thing is, since it's all constant, just turns into an F delta X. So we've got MG delta X is our term right there. Okay. Now for the other one, again, the other term, uh, the mass is constant. So this whole thing just turns into an M delta theta. And our moment this time is given to us, all right? And so it's that value of 100 right there. And M is, whoo, that's not the right M. M is 100 and our delta theta is um, pi over two. Okay, it's kind of weird. Remember, you got to do all these things in radians. Okay, so don't don't just go oh, 90 degrees. No, don't do that. Keep it in radians. All right. Um, so that's going to be 100 times pi over two, and we get ready to uh, plug that guy in. Okay, which I we might as well do it now. Okay, I think it's time. So uh, our equation then turns into one half i at the, around the pivot omega final squared, 
and that's going to be equals minus mg delta x plus m delta theta. Okay. So gravity is doing a negative work on it because it's going up. So you can imagine if it did have some speed, it would have to have slowed down. All right. But our moment is twisting the heck out of this thing. And so that's going to try to increase its speed. Now, once you put in all your numbers, mg delta x plus m delta theta, what you're going to get for the amount of energy put into the system is 3208. Okay, so that becomes our one half I zero omega final squared. All right, um, then we're going we do some algebra, multiply both sides by two, divide by I, take the square root of the universe, and we get our equation that we had. And again, we're going to see this quite a bit 32.08 divided by. I zero. And once you put in all those numbers and do your calculation, you're going to get 2.23. Okay. Again, it's a plus or minus deal. We'd have to choose. And um, so looking at the physical situation, we would choose positive uh, in this particular case. Okay. All right. Now, some of you might have been wondering, is it, is it possible We got rid of the uh, mv squared term there. Would it have been possible to have done it this way? Uh, and the answer is yes. Okay, and I'm going to show you, I think, in the next example. Well, I got one coming up where, where we'll do that, and you can see how that's going to work. Okay, it just makes it a little bit more complicated. Okay, and some of you may have wondered, well, we know we've got weight acting here. So doesn't that produce a moment? I mean, after all, I've got a moment arm. I've got a force. Okay. Um, yeah, you can do that. You certainly can. Okay. And you have to end up defining this. Let's call it phi. And then you have to integrate that moment the whole time. Okay. That will work too. That's a longer route, but that will also get you there. What you can't do is you can't use gravity two times. All right. So you either treat the weight as um, a, a linear change, okay, like we did. We're just lifting up two and a half feet, or you treat it like it's creating a moment. And then you're going to have to integrate it because that moment becomes a function of theta. Okay, so pick one, pick one. You can't do both. You can do either one, but you can't do both. Okay. All right. Pretty straightforward.